students, it's me, Gohan from your Gohan Elam. Today we are going to look at an educational video about Google Scratch. Google Scratch is a coding language for kids. There's two versions in Google Scratch, online and offline. Come on, let's learn about Google Scratch. Click a browser and type Google Scratch. In the result screen, scroll down to Scratch Imagine Program Share. In your address bar, check if you have scratch.mit.edu. If you want an online profile, click Join Scratch. Create your username and password, then click Next. Choose the country where you live in, then click Next. Choose the month and year you are born in, then click Next. Put your gender, click Next. Put your email ID to create the account. We are not going to create the account today. You can create the project without the account too. To download offline version, in Google Scratch, scroll down to see support and the third option is download. In the screen, download based on your OS requirement. Click on create to create projects online. This is Scratch programming screen and that's a tutorial video. If you want, you can go through it. These are various coding blocks. This is the coding area. And that's the result screen. In the result screen, you'll see a sprite. We are going to write code for that sprite. For example, let's write a code for this cat sprite to rotate. Now click on this code block for our sprite to rotate. See it is so easy to make coding in scratch. Now let's make a new game in project. Friends do you think I don't have internet? No. I have internet I want to show you this game. I like this game very much. Come let's create a similar game in google scratch. Click on create to create a new project. We don't need this default sprite cat. Let's delete it. To create this project we need road, trees and dinosaurs. Let's find the road backdrop. Let's click on backdrop. Search for road in backdrop. I can't find my proper backdrop. So let's make our own. In backdrop menu, you will see a brush, click on that. In the screen, click on the rectangle box. Now create a big rectangle. Let's change the color by clicking fill. Pick the color blue in the color picker. Let's make another rectangle for road. For that, click on the cursor and then click on the rectangle. Create the rectangle in the bottom of the screen like this. Now change the color of this rectangle to black because roads are black. Now adjust our road to the bottom of our screen. It looks good to me now. Now click on code area. We need a road divider white line. For that click on the sprite. Search for lion. We have a red line but we need a white one. Let's change the color to white. For that click on costume. Let's change the color to white with our color picker. Let's make the line smaller. For that click on the cursor. And then click on the line to make it smaller. Now adjust the line to the center like this. Now click on the coding area. We need to make this line move from right to left. 
For that, go to Control Blocks and then choose Forever Loop. Drag to our coding area. Forever Loop will run the code inside it continuously. For example, go to Motions and drag the Change X by block into Forever Loop. Click the coding now and see how the exposition of the line is changing. We need our line to move right to left, but it's moving left to right. So change this, change it block to minus 10. See our line moved from right to left, but it stopped at X position minus 319. At this point, it has to go to positive 319 again. For that, we need a else block. Drag if then else block inside the forever loop. Move change x to else block. In the if block, we need an operator. Go to operators and choose the equal to operator. Now drag the operator into the if block. Here we will check the x position. Go to motion and then check for x position block. Drag that into the operator. In the operator, check if the exposition reached minus 319. Change here as minus 319. Set the exposition as positive 319 here. Now see our road is moving. Hooray! Let's make it more realistic by adding trees. Click the sprite box and search for trees. Click on tree 1 and put it in the side of the road. Let's make it small by changing the size to 80. Like this. Let's make this tree also to move. For that I will tell you a trick. Go to line sprite and then click on the code and then put control C. Control C means copy. Click on the tree one sprite and then control V. Control V means paste. So we copied lines uh, line sprites code to tree one sprites code. Now we see the current exposition of tree 1 is 189. Let's put that in setx block. Now let's test our code by clicking the forever block. Our tree is moving now. But it stopped at the exposition minus 281. Now let's change the operator value to minus 281. I see the tree is moving but not the lion. Let's fix it. For that we need when flag is clicked block. Go to events and drag the when flag is clicked to both of the sprites. Now stop the coding and click the flag. I see both sprites moving. Yay! Let's add another tree by clicking the sprite box. Move the new sprite to the end of the road, like this. Make it small by ad adjusting the size to 80. Let's do the trick again. Let's click on tree 1. Click on the code and press Ctrl C. Now click on our new tree and then press Ctrl V. Stop the coding and click on the flag. Now I see all the sprites are moving, but new tree has stopped at X position minus 264. Let's type minus 264 in the checking operator. All the sprites are moving now. Hooray! And it's good now for me. Let's add a dinosaur by Clicking the sprite box. Pick data 
us at 4 and move it to the end of the road like this. We cannot do the trick now. We should write new coding for the dinosaur. When we press up arrow, the dinosaur should go up. When we press down arrow, the dinosaur should go down. Note down the Y position, it's minus 36. Let's write the code for up arrow for that in events. Click and drag when space key is clicked block into our coding area. Now click on space and then change it to up arrow. Go to motion and then choose glide one second xy block under when up arrow key is pressed block. Move your dinosaur up and note the y position. For me it's 957. Now enter 97 in the glide y section. Now repeat the coding for when down arrow is pressed. To bring down the dinosaur enter minus 36. Now let's test the coding by pressing down arrow. Let's make the game more interesting by adding apple and chicken. Press the sprite box to add apple. Drag the apple and place it in the right side of the road. Let's do the trick again. For that, click on tree one sprite and copy the code. Click on apple sprite and press Ctrl V. Stop the code and note down the exposition of apples. Now press the flag and I see the apple moving. It stopped at the exposition minus 256. Let's uh, enter minus 256 in the checking operator. Now I see the apple moving but it's passing through the dinosaur. I want the apple to disappear when it hits the dinosaur. And pass through when the dinosaur jumps like this. Let's do coding for the same. Go to controls. Choose the if then block and drag it under the forever like this. Go to sensing and then drag the touching block to the if block. Change the mouse pointer to dinosaur 4. Go to looks. Now find the hide block and then drag it inside the if then block like this. Now drag show block and put it under set text like this. Now I see it's working perfectly. Since our dinosaur is a carnivorous, so let's feed a chicken. Click on sprite box and type chicken. Click on the hen and place it in the end of the road like this. Let's make the hen point towards dinosaur. For that, click on costume. Click on the cursor and click on flip horizontal. Change chicken size to 80. Click on apple sprite and then copy the coding. Click on hen sprite and then paste the coding. Up the coding and then press the flag. I see the chicken moving. Chicken is not coming back because the exposition is minus 271. Click here to see the chicken. Let's change the checking operator to minus 271. I see all the sprites moving and the game is working perfectly. I want to add more rules. I want my dinosaur to say game over when it eats two apples. Let's add coding for that in apple sprite. From control, choose the if then block. Place it under hide block. Let's add equal to operator to our if block. Let's make a variable for our apple. For that, go to variables and click on make a variable. Type apples and press OK. Drag apple variable to check operator. Drag set to apple block 
under one flag is clicked. Let's increase apple count by one when it hit dinosaur. Let's drag the change apple by one block under the hide block. Change the check operator value to two. Go to events and create a new broadcast message. Click broadcast message and create stop all. Send the broadcast message when Apple hits 2. Go to Dinosaur Sprite to receive the message. Drag when I receive block. Now let's record the message game over. Go to sound and record a message like this. In the record screen, press on the red button to record. Say game over and stop recording. Save recording and go to coding area. Drag start sound recording under when I receive message. Go to looks and drag say hello block. Place it under start sound block. Modify hello to game over. Go to controls and drag stop all block. Now stop the program and start again by clicking flag. Move the dinosaur up and down and try to only eat chicken. Our game is working perfectly. The game stopped when I hit Apple 2. I see a problem here. It's not displaying or saying game over. Let's fix it. Let's introduce a wait block before stop all block. Now let's test the code. Game over. I see game over as well as the message. Hooray! It's working. Friends, it's time for your challenge. I want you to display apple score and chicken score like this. Let me see what's my high score. Wow, I got nine. I had fun. Did you enjoy? If you enjoyed, like, comment and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.